Hello, Mike from Power Beta Tips. I want to walk you through a new feature that was just released here in April called the Linguistics Tool. All right, so I'll bring you over here to Power BI Desktop. What you'll notice here on the modeling ribbon, there's now a linguistic schema. So for this file, I just have a simple set of tables, about four of them, bunch of countries in them, and I haven't really modified any of the linguistic schema. There's more documentation on the Power BI site for what linguistic schemas are. So let's zoom in here. Here is linguistic schema. Now you have the ability to be able to add and modify things right in the tool. So if you go over here to linguistic schema, you can then export the linguistic schema from Power BI desktop. It'll ask you where you want to save it. Save, export was successful. So what you can do is you can open this up with Visual Studio Code. So if I double click the file here, I'll bring up my code editing and I'm just using Microsoft Studio Code. We'll zoom in here so you can see what's going on. So this is YAML. It's written in YAML language. It's a easy to read language. But there's a lot of code, and you'll see here, there's a ton of information inside this file. And there actually is a standard that goes along with this to help you edit this and make sure that you edit it correctly. I'll put links in the video. So one of the things we want to do here, if we want to modify something, we have to know what we want to modify and then change it. Again, with code and digging into YAML, people aren't really interested in doing that. So Power BI Tips developed a new tool. And here's our homepage. And so it's called Lingo. Lingo is a code editing tool for the linguistic schema. So you can click on it here at the navigation bar or get to it here by clicking the icon on the home page. Once you get to the linguistics tool, this is how it will look. You have the ability to upload the linguistic schema that you download from the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to choose a file. We'll go to our sample file that we just downloaded. We'll hit open. And what you'll notice now is the tool automatically loads all of the data and starts providing, providing you with additional details. So in this tool, the schema that is used to define how you're supposed to write a linguistics tool is already incorporated into Lingo. So it knows that for dynamic improvement, you can set it to full, high confidence, none, or default. I'll leave it for full because that's, that's fine for now. You'll also note here that everything's expandable. So this is feeling a little bit more uh, user friendly. I can expand a section. I can expand multiple items within a section, like so. This will let me see what's going on here. I can edit and modify. The items on the left are being generated by the tool and the items, if I wanted to change them, would be here in the green. So this is just telling me this is a text field. So you can also expand and contract all of the fields. So say I have a bunch of things open here, again, to help you navigate through the code and help you make quick and changes and find things, you can then expand and contract everything. So I can expand all fields and it'll load everything in full detail or I can contract them to get down to just a very simple object. So here's the very base part of the code. Now you'll notice here out of the box, we have entities and relationships. But there's actually another feature you can add to the tool called global substitutions. A global substitution is essentially is saying, I want to take one phrasing or one word and replace it with another. So for example, here's global substitutions. I click the button up here. It'll add this section for me. And then I can enter the two items I want to substitute. So maybe I want to substitute customers and I want to replace them with vendor. Maybe that's a substitution that I would want to make globally. You can also do a search on everything. So if I open up the relationships section here, you can see there's different phrases and items in here. So this one has a table called products. If I was interested in looking at all instances where products were found in the table, I can go up here and type products and then click these little down arrows here on the right hand side and it'll start navigating through each instance of wherever this is found. So if, there's, if you know there's a keyword or you're modifying your YAML schema, 
uh, in your linguistic schema, you can then edit this and search through different phrases that you need. All right, let's contract everything and bring it right back. So also what you'll have here is there's also a lot of code blocks. So, you know, these, uh, again, in this, in the spec, which I'll link to, there's a lot more discussion around, you know, um, how do you have a verb or a noun, and how does a linguistic schema help you intelligently use Q&A and the natural language processing of Power BI to find results within your data. What you'll notice here out of the box, the program automatically defines some various features. So from the customers table, it's able to find that a customer is in an address, a customer has a company name, and a customer has a contact name. So these are relationships that the program is automatically detecting. There's going to be instances in your model where there are relationships that the program just can't define by itself. It needs a little help from you. So the neat part about this is I've already defined in code some code blocks. So if you click these little icons on the left-hand side, you can duplicate a section here. So if you like the way this section is, you can duplicate it. And what it will do is it'll rename it. And um, with the tool, it also gives you some automatic code editing. So if it knows that this is inappropriate and it doesn't like it uh, having two items with the same name, a little warning flag will show up. So if we just name that the two, the warning flag will go away. And basically we've just been able to duplicate that section. So all the code that was previously sh shown there is now copied down here and you can modify this. Uh, one thing I'll definitely note here, if you modify any of these codes, um, you're never really supposed to delete stuff. So Power BI Desktop always likes to have all the linguistic schema for you. So um, instead of, if you want to remove an item or if you want to remove something here that has been generated, you would change this to deleted. Oh, actually you'll note here, see I didn't type it correct correctly. The little warning flag will actually tell me what it's supposed to be labeled here. So I can do user authored, which would mean something that I wanted to create. Generated, which is mean from the tool. It means the tool generates things automatically. Um, anything in generated state, the tool will always overwrite. So uh, if you're modifying any of the code, you'll want to see if there's any um, states that are generated and then either move them to deleted or user authored. And then here would be deleted. So we can type in deleted, D-E-L-E-T, -E -E, deleted. And so that would mean that this state is deleted for this binding. We don't want that attached to um, this customer and contact name. So you can also remove chunks of code. If I click this box again, we can remove this whole section with editing. If I want to add a generic block of code, maybe not related to this one, but something else, you can also click this options button. And down here, click the down arrow on the insert. And you'll notice I've also added a number of other phrasings here. So we have a preposition phrasing, adjective phrasing, an adjective measurement phrasing, and then just a noun phrasing. So the simplest of these are the nouns. I'll add that here. And what this will do is it'll basically build you a phrasing here for you. Uh, you can name it, and then it goes through and helps you kind of build out the standard code that you would need to build that phrasing. So this this could be, you know, customer. Let's try and name it customer as, I don't know, something else, a car, whatever that would be. And then you're going to want to define the table. And you'll note here, these properties, because you added them, I've already made the state default to user authored, so they show up automatically for you. Uh, then also here, well, you can enter the subject, and then your table, table.column. So in this case, we're saying, you know, find the table where this um, field would live, and add the table name, and then dot, and then the column name. And then the weight of it would be user authored as well. So you can also add other phrasings here. And a note here, you can add these in anywhere you want. So if you wanted to, you could mess up the code pretty bad here if you were in the phrasing section here and you append or insert another block of code. The tool won't restrict you there, so you have to be a little bit mindful about where you're adding things. So you could add accidentally a section here in the middle and then the warnings would pop up and it would let you know that something's not right. So we can delete this whole section because we don't want to modify this. Once you're done making your changes, you can then download the YAML. So we'll hit download here. And what it will do is it'll produce a file that's on your desktop. So here's the file we just downloaded. And now what we can do is you can go back over to the linguistic schema inside Power BI Desktop, click on the icon, and now we'll import the new linguistic schema. Clicking on the file, we'll hit open. 
it'll crank for a bit. And if we did everything right, it will successfully import the schema. So now we've been able to make any changes. So why would you want to do this? Well, in, Q in the Power BI desktop, the linguistic schema helps the tool understand exactly what you are telling it in words, plain English, and it will define what a chart would look like. So for example, the chart I have here has company name and the freighting amount. So if I click here and just double click on the main screen and then say companies by freight. And you'll note here, right, I'm having a lot of the same data. Now this is in a um, bar chart. So we'll just hit enter here and let OK. Let's change this to a table. And we'll see that we have the same results here. So um, we added another term in here called vendor. So now what we should be able to do is say vendor by vendors freight. And now it's pulling in a new term for us. So the linguistic schema should help you be able to modify the tool and make it better for your users. So play some play around a little bit. Um, check out the tool. Um, if you want. And uh, thank you for your time. Have a great day.